Hi guys, I'm Emily with Kohler and Dram, and I'm here today with Sarah Cheeseman from Operation Homefront. Um, if you guys remember, um, we skipped this last year due to the pandemic, but we're really excited to be bringing Roses for Soldiers back this year in 2021 um, during the month of July. So Sarah's here to talk a little bit about the program with me and how Operation Homefront works. She is our regional rep um, for the Minnesota Upper Midwest area. Um, so she's gonna walk us through Operation Homefront and the program. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about Roses for Soldiers and how that initiative works. So during the month of July, um, we like to support a charity and our charity of choice is Operation Homefront. Um, I'll let Sarah talk about the organization and how it works, but what we do on Colder's End is we make a donation from our, our rose sales during the month of July um, and donate that to Operation Homefront. So any purchases that you guys make during the month of July that involves roses, um, two cents per stem of every rose sold helps troops and their families. So Sarah, let's jump into Operation Home Friends a little bit and you can talk more about your organization and what you guys do because your cause is amazing. So can you give us a little overview of Operation Home Front and what it is that you guys do? Yeah, thank you, Emily, so much. And thank you so much to you and to all your vendors for your support. It just means so much to us. And, and we're glad you're back this year. So I yeah, know we're excited to be back. <laughs> so, thanks so much for coming back. And, and we're just so appreciative of your support every year. So thank this you is so something much. That we've, we've definitely missed doing. So we yeah. missed last year for sure. But we're very, very excited to, to yeah. be with you again. And we're excited to have you back. So thanks so much. So I just want to talk a little bit about Operation Homefront. Our mission is to build strong, stable, and secure military families so they can thrive. We really want them to thrive, not just struggle to get by in the communities that they've worked so hard to protect. So our goal is just to help military families when they're having those bumps in life, and we just want to help stabilize those families. We work mostly with uh, what we call E1 through E6 families, which is basically those kind of entry level military families, the privates through the staff sergeants. And then we also work with wounded, ill, injured post 9-11 veterans. So those are kind of the two populations that we're serving through our programs. We serve families in a variety of ways um, across many different um, programs. We have kind of our three pillar programs. We have our relief program, which is our critical financial assistance program, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. And we also have a transitional pro housing program where we help um, families who are transitioning out of the military um, stabilize with housing until they move on to more permanent housing. We have recurring programs, which are our back to school program, our back to school brigade program, our holiday meals for military program, our star spangled baby showers. Um, so those are programs that we do annually. In fact, we're just in the, we're just ramping up our back to school program. We just opened registration this week. So we have families that are now registering to receive um, backpacks of school supplies. And then we have what we call our resiliency programs. And those are programs um, where we do have families that after they've been in our uh, uh, program for a couple of years, receive mortgage-free homes. And then we also have a great caregivers program with those that are caring for wounded or injured or sick soldiers, get the support that they need as caregivers. Cause a lot of times the caregivers are forgotten kind of in that piece. So we have a great caregiver support system across the country to help those folks, um, you know, have support and, and be able to talk to others that are serving um, uh, similar roles. So those are kind of the three pillars of, of the programming and, and, and where the funds go basically to support families. That's great. And I, I know um, yeah, go ahead, Emily. Sorry. No, um, we um, we started working with Operation Homefront, I think, in what, 2015? I think so. This program has kind of been an ongoing thing with Kohler and Dram, and we've established, a, a, I think, a really good working relationship with Operation Homefront. And yep. um, your mission is amazing. Um, we love the support that we're able to give um, to veterans and military families. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about where the operation, or I'm sorry, where the support for Operation Homefront kind of comes from? Is it all donation-based? Do you get federal support? Yeah, well, basically, we're very similar to a lot of nonprofits where our donations are coming from great companies like yours who are supporting us at either the national or local level. Um, we receive a lot of funding through grants. And then we also receive a lot of funding through individual donors that, that like you guys, just, you know, are supporting our mission and supporting families. One thing I really love about Operation Home Front is we are, we're dedicated to our mission, but we're also dedicated to getting the funds that come in 
from great supporters to families. Over 90% of the funds that we receive are going to support families and programs. Yeah. So I think that's really great when, when we're saying the money is going to serve, right? The right. money's not going to me as a staff person or, or to operations. I mean, some that of it does, but, but you know, over 90% are going directly yeah. to support families. That was one of those things when we were researching nonprofits to work with for this initiative. Um, that was, I think, kind of the, the final selling point for us with Operation Homefront is that, you know, over 90 percent of, of those donations actually do go towards your mission and supporting military military yeah. families. That was a huge selling point for us because sometimes you don't see that with a lot of right. a lot of other charities and nonprofits. So that was yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so we're, kind of, we're, we're proud of that number and we're proud that the money is going to, to serve yeah. families because that's our goal, obviously. Yes, that's so amazing. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about the types of support or the types of services or um, kind of what those donations are used for? What types of help do military families need? Yep. Yep. So our biggest, the biggest program is our critical financial assistance program, which I alluded to, you know, a little bit earlier. And that's basically where we're, we're really helping those families who hit that bump. Um, they might need help with rent or mortgage or utilities or medical bill, you know, an auto, you know, uh, auto insurance or, or automo automobile bills or food or things like that. So a lot of our funds are going to support those families that that just need that, you know, kind of hand uh, hand up a little bit while they while they stabilize. So the majority of our, our funding is kind of going to support that program. Um, since Operation Homefront started this program, um, we've been able to provide over $30 million in support to over um, uh, 46,000 families. And then when COVID hit, we actually started well, through, the, through the generosity of our donors, a separate fund to help people that were impacted directly by COVID. And we've been able to help since March of uh, 2020, about 2,000 families. Um, about $1.2 million uh, just for people who need assistance with COVID. A lot of our spouses um, lost their jobs. Uh, our military spouses lost their jobs during COVID because they were in uh, you know, hospitality or service industries. And then obviously uh, the medical side too became important during COVID. Sure. Um, but I also wanted to just break down for you a little bit Minnesota numbers, because obviously yeah. a Minnesota-based company. Um, but So those numbers I gave you are national numbers. But in Minnesota, I just uh, uh, in 2019, um, we helped. Let me go back up a little bit. Actually, in 2018, we provided about $15,000 in relief to families. In 2019, we provided about $10,000 in relief to families in Minnesota. And in 2020, almost $20,000 in financial That's relief. Amazing. Um, so, so to fit, so the dollars again are, are you know, are we we serve locally. We're a national organization, but we also serve locally in the family, and, and dollars are staying locally also. Yeah, that's something that I really like about your website too is that you can kind of search by by geographic area when you're looking for families in need. Um, so you can kind of narrow it down and be able to donate directly to families that are right in your backyard, essentially. So, and that's something that that we like to do here at Polar too. When when we do donate to Operation Homefront, um, we work with Sarah, and we ask that you know the the donation that we're able to give is directly um, impactful to families in our area. So whether that's Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, um, we try to make sure that that's affecting families that our customers are directly um, working with and in your own communities every day. Yeah. So, yeah, we really appreciate your flexibility with that and that we're yeah. able to do that in, you know, especially, you know, at home. So, right, right. And I think people want to serve at home and I think that's great. So, yeah, yeah. So talk to me a little bit more about um, how Operation Homefront um, kind of manages the families. Do you have direct contact with them? Talk a little bit more about your initiatives and maybe what your favorite yep. one is. I know you mentioned putting backpacks together for, <laughs> you know, the backpack, the back to school thing, which I think would be a lot of fun. And so it's, talk a, it's to me so about, much fun, right? Yeah, about those initiatives and, and maybe how you guys are involved in other areas. Yeah. Oh, with our critical financial assistance program, when families come to us, they do work with a case manager who works with them through the entire process. And when we work with families, we're kind of looking at their entire picture. So it's it, it, the goal is to say, we want to help you stabilize um, as a family and not just be like, we're just going to pay your utility bill this month. So we want to really help families stabilize their entire financial picture. So they are connected with a caseworker who does work with them. Um, in that process, which I think is great because they're really getting that kind of one-on-one -on -one attention, which I really love. 
um, kind of on a more local level, you know, you had mentioned um, like our, our back to school brigade program. So for example, um, we're gonna be serving um, families at the two bases in North Dakota, the base in South Dakota and the base in Nebraska this year. And then I'm also working with a couple of great donors who have stepped forward um, to try to um, provide backpacks to some of our National Guard families here in Minnesota. Um, they've they've uh, stepped up a lot this year. So we're trying to really, we're trying to uh, serve at least 100 students in Minnesota this year with backpacks in addition to um, school supplies. So um, again, as you mentioned, we have great flexibility and that is one of the things I love about working for Operation Home Front is that addition to some of our regular programming that I can reach out to donors and say, hey, let's try to do something in Minnesota this year to serve families, or let's try to do something in Wisconsin because of whatever is happening there. So I do have flexibility at the local level to be able to bring some additional programs um, in that maybe aren't uh, part of our regular programming, which sure. I think is really great. So yeah. yeah and then in the fall, we'll do this. We also do a holiday meals program where we're providing families with uh, what we call dry goods for lack of a better term, but basically kind of a basket full of uh, holiday foods. And then we also provide them with a gift card so they can go fill up whatever their needs are. And that's really a fun program too, to again, just to see families come. And again, with COVID things were a little weird, but to see families come in and, and the kids either getting those backpacks, you know, kindergartners are so excited. Older kids, maybe not as much, <laughs> or to just be able to provide a meal for a family and just, you know, another piece of Operation Homefronts programs that is, is we really want to celebrate that gratitude piece too. You know, it's about helping families, but we also want to be able to say thank you for your service and thanks for what you're doing for us because we don't get to do that a lot. So I love the fact that when we have these programs, I can thank families for the service and just say, you know, we appreciate you and here's hopefully a, a, a small way that we can help you and, and, uh, and in addition to helping financially also be able to, to say thank you. Yeah, that's a really important piece for us too. When we started this, we wanted a way to um, have a, you know an, an impact on someone's life directly. And military families feel like they just make so much sacrifice for yeah. everyone. So that was really a big component for us when we started this program too. So, and then we thought too, well, roses are the most popular flower. Um, let's take our top seller because usually in a typical July, we sell upwards of one or 200,000 stems of roses. So wow. we can make the biggest impact with roses. And um, yeah. we really appreciate the support that we get from our customers too. Um, so throughout the month of July, this program is running. We're going to take sales from July 1st through the 31st. Um, and again, two cents for every stem of roses sold gets donated to Operation home front. We encourage you guys to run programs in your shops or um, in your studios if you can. We have a media kit available for you if you'd like to hang up posters and do some promotions within your shop. We'll have digital content available for you to share on your social media pages or on your website. Um, we try to make this as seamless and easy as possible for our shops and our, and our customers too. Um, so anything that you might need, please let us know. Um, we're happy to provide any type of promotional material for you. Um, Operation Homefront has more information on their website or their social media pages too. So please follow them. Um, check out Operation Homefront's website for more information. If you'd like to donate on your own too, there's an easy to use digital platform right on their website. Um, Sarah, was there anything else you wanted to share about Operation Homefront and your mission today? Yeah, I, again, I'm just I'm just so appreciative of the support. We, you know, I I'm so lucky to just, just to kind of be able to be the vehicle. Um, to to take the work that you guys are doing and, and the generosity again of your vendors to to pass that along to families. So I'm just so honored to to be able to do that and uh, appreciate your support, your ongoing support, and uh, um, thank you so much. And thanks on behalf of the families that we're serving. Thank you. We're very excited again to be partnering with Operation Homefront and um, we'd like to extend a, a big thank you also to our customers um, for supporting this initiative. Um, usually we see great support throughout the month of July, so we're getting excited for this and please keep it up. Um, again, follow Operation Homefront online, check out their website, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channels as well. And um, we'll follow with some updates at the end of July and let you guys know how this goes. So please support Operation Homefront and thank you very much. Thank you very much.